Hey, welcome everybody. I hope you guys had a good and restful spring break. I know this isn't ideally how we would have pictured spending our spring break at the start of 2020, but here we are. I do hope that this finds you in good health and that your family is also in good health. Uh, this video is just going to be going over the assignment for Thursday and Friday after spring break. Uh, we're actually going to be transitioning out of our last unit, which was ancient India, and we're actually going to be starting our next ancient civilization in Asia, which is ancient China. This is a civilization that dates back over 3,000 years and has developed some of the most influential philosophers in the East, as well as, frankly, the world, and formed one of the earliest international trading routes called the Silk Road, which connected both Asia and Europe for the first time, which began the exchange of ideas and people that continues to influence and impact our lives today. Today, global trade continues to be a major part of our economy, of our lives, and of human development. And so in this unit, we're actually going to be looking at the very start of international global trade. So the major takeaways for this unit is we're going to be looking at the three schools of thought these are three philosophies, also known as schools of thought, that were developed in ancient China. First, you have probably the most famous and influential, which is Confucianism. Then the most controversial and interesting, in my opinion, which is legalism. And then probably the most creative and easygoing of the philosophies, which is Taoism. And as you guys look at these three philosophies that develop in ancient China, we're going to be exploring this question of how does a leader govern best? Because each of these philosophies has a different approach to how to lead people towards creating a harmonious, stable society. And I think with what's going on in the world today with COVID-19 and the varying degrees of response to this crisis, it's actually going to be very, very much like a strong, it's gonna be a very strong connection to what we're learning and what's going on now. And at the end of this section, you'll be asked to consider which of these three philosophies do you think would probably be the best at handling a crisis like the one that we're in today. After that, we're gonna be looking at a major historical controversy. We're gonna be looking at the first emperor of China, which was Emperor Qin. And we'll be exploring whether or not he was an effective leader. And we'll be practicing how to write an argument and also how to write counter arguments. Now, Emperor Qin was incredibly infamous because of his tactics while he ruled. He was a very harsh ruler that led with a very strong central government. But he accomplished some incredible feats. And historians today argue about whether or not he was an effective leader. And you guys are going to take part in that debate. And finally, we're going to be looking at how the Silk Road changed the world. Now, you have four major assignments, quizzes, and projects. First, you have a primary source analysis. You're going to be looking at the three schools of thought. You're actually going to be reading direct quotes from these three philosophies and interpreting them. Then you have your first project of distance learning. You guys are going to be selecting one of these three philosophies as the philosophy that you believe is the best suited for helping create a stable, harmonious society. And this will probably be on Google Slides or Adobe Spark. I'll be posting directions and how-tos later this month. You also are going to be doing a short written argument evaluating the role of Emperor Qin. This is going to be one of the one of the final writing pieces, there's really only three big ones coming up in the next two months. This one followed by a, well, what I like to call a short fable that you guys will be writing in our Greek unit. And then the final reflection of the year. And finally, there will be a vocabulary quiz going over the major vocabulary terms that will be on Jupiter Ed. Now, today we're going to be looking at the Shang Dynasty, which was the oldest dynasty that we have record of in Chinese history. It dates back over 3,500 years, making it one of the oldest city-states and civilizations in history. And again, to review, a dynasty is a family of rulers who rule over a country for a long period of time. We only know about this dynasty because of archaeological remains found in Ang Yang, 
which is just here along the Yellow River. But again, we don't know too much about this first Chinese dynasty because it is so old. But from what we've been able to uncover from archaeological ruins, we've been able to see the formation of some of the earliest language and religion in ancient China. So you guys are going to be looking at a short reading that looks at the Shang Dynasty, which developed between the Yellow and Yangtze River. Now, as you guys will be reading, you're going to be reading about these very very interesting archaeological sites. This is actually one from the actual site at Ang Yang. This is a horse and chariot that was found in the pit. And this is a rendering of what the pits were when they were dug and constructed. And one of the very fascinating parts is part of this elaborate process that the Shang Dynasty had for burying people involved for the royalty human sacrifice actually and so we'll look at what we can infer or our best educated guess about why they practiced human sacrificing and what it tells us about their religion so you guys will have this short reading here it's two pages when you open the document you'll put your name and then you'll insert the date here and then you'll do a short reading here that talks about these archaeological ruins found at Ang Yang in 1928 that goes over what was found at these burial sites that were excavated and what these findings tell us about the Shang religion. So once you've read these short four paragraphs, you'll answer these two questions. First, what was the Shang dynasty and how do we know about the Shang dynasty? And this will be found in the first two paragraphs here. Then. What have archaeologists discovered about the Shang Dynasty? Which, if you read the last two paragraphs, should answer it very, should help you with forming your answer. Make sure to include the term human sacrifice in your response. And then you're going to read the Shang Dynasty religion because you're going to be reading about what's known as oracle bones. The Shang had a very, very interesting belief. They would take bones from animals like cows and turtles and they would write various questions into these bones and then take hot pieces of metal like a hot needle for instance that's been heated in fire and then they would essentially use the hot needle to crack the bone and then they would read the cracks in the bone to try to figure out what the answer to this question was and this was kind of used as a way to prophesize and try to predict the future now while this tells us a lot about the yang dynasty it also tells us a lot about the origins of the chinese language which is one of the oldest written languages in recorded history so we really will see in this reading the beginnings of one of the most influential ancient civilizations in history. Now, once you've read this and watched a short video talking directly about the Oracle Bones, you'll answer questions three and four. What do we know about the Shang religion? And you'll include mention of ancestor worship and Oracle Bones in your answer. And what was the importance of the Shang Oracle Bones? Not only do they tell us a lot about their religion, but they also tell us a lot about the language that developed in China that is still used today. So that's what you're working on. A few things to remind you all of. First, please make sure that you read and answer questions one through four. Make sure that your answers are in full complete sentences and in your own words. If I find that you've copied, you'll get a zero. And I'll be grading on not only the accuracy of your responses, but the detail. So please try to avoid answering these in single sentences. You know, try to put detail from your understanding to get full credit. This will be due Saturday. Uh, actually, I'll probably do Saturday or Friday. I haven't set just yet, but I will actually post it directly into the distance learning document. And if you have any questions, just please let me know. I hope this finds you all well. and. Again, try to stay as healthy as you can. Okay, goodbye.